I welcome you as we come together today, this fifth Sunday in this holy season of Lent. May God's peace surround us in this time of worship so that when we leave this place today, surely we will be able to say that we have been in the presence of the Lord. I welcome you. We give thanks to God for the gift of your presence, and especially we welcome those who may be visiting with us this morning. If you are visiting with us, or we ask all of you to please sign the register of attendance that is located in your pew pad and pass that to your neighbors who are sitting next to you. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight a couple of things about our shared church life uh, that we want to, to make sure that you have on your calendar. First of all, this coming Thursday, uh, March the 21st at noon, will be our final uh, ecumenical community Lenten luncheon. And it is, uh, we are the host church this week, so it will be here uh, on our campus. The Reverend John Brock, the new pastor of First Presbyterian Church, will be speaking, and so uh, we hope that you will uh, make every effort to come and to be a part of that. Please notice on the back of your bulletin the schedule for next Sunday, for Palm Sunday, continuing throughout Holy Week. There are numerous opportunities uh, for you to come and worship, to uh, spend time in prayer and preparation prior to Easter Sunday. So please uh, make sure that you are familiar with those opportunities. Today we come into worship and we have beautiful flowers that are placed in the sanctuary. They are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Beverly Hankins. They are given by Trey Hankins, Madeline, Charlie, Caroline, and Clara White. And we give thanks for those. There's also a rosebud that is placed here in front of the pulpit. It is given to the glory of God and in honor of the birth of Brian James Hadma II, who was born March the 9th here in Tupelo. We give thanks to God uh, for him, and we will be offering prayers of thanksgiving for him later in worship today. Again, welcome. Thanks be to God for this time of worship. And I invite you now to uh, greet your neighbors who are sitting close to, you, close to you with a ritual of friendship. Let us now worship.
are able. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Blessed be the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Holy God, by the cross and resurrection of Jesus, you lift the suffering world toward hope and transformation and open the way to eternal salvation. As we move ever closer to the passion of Christ, may your law of love be written on our hearts as he draws all people to himself, revealing your love for the world. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Your word, O oh God, has power to change our lives and create a whole new world. As we meditate on your word this day, 
fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may treasure your word with our whole heart and fix our eyes on you. Amen. The first lesson today comes to us from Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Hear now the words of the prophet. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep God's testimonies, who seek God with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in God's ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. I will save me not utterly. second lesson this morning is Hebrews 5, beginning in verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been des designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel lesson comes to us this day from John's Gospel, the 12th chapter. Hear now the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. And they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. For those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. For whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. For whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate to them the kind of death that he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone mentioned to me this past week that I haven't said much lately about how you look. I want to remind you that you're the best looking congregation that I've ever had. And I'm thankful to you. Today as we come into worship and as we take a deeper dive into the gospel lesson, I invite you to think of this, the voice. The voice. Oh, I know, let's be honest with each other. When I say the voice today, many of you probably do not, uh, you do not think of the voice of God. But you think about maybe pushing the button on your chair, and maybe Reba might turn around. <laughs> and if Reba doesn't turn, maybe uh, Dan and Shay might turn and Oh my goodness, that, uh, that Blake Shelton might come back and push his button when you think of the voice. But today I invite us to hear a different voice. I invite us to hear what the voice of God is saying to us. What does the voice of God say to us on this Sunday? This fifth Sunday in Lent, this Sunday, as we begin to prepare our hearts for next week. For next Sunday, our children will be ushering us in and processing with palm branches, and we will be making that journey into Holy Week. But for today, 
is God's voice to us that might prepare us for this holiest of weeks? And what is the message today for our troubled soul? The Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah and the Gospel lesson from John both speak to how do we have a forward-looking faith and where do we find hope for the troubled soul? If we acknowledge on this fifth Sunday that we too have these questions, then we have taken the first step. Well, the first step in any journey especially a difficult journey, should be to ask for the voice of God and to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This past week, I had a wonderful experience. I was invited to a 90th birthday party for one of my friends. Oh, some of you were there, but for those who were not, let me tell you about it. She sat beautiful like a queen on a throne in a beautiful chair sitting beside the fireplace with those that she loved gathered around her. We had the most delicious punch. It may have had a little spice to it <laughs> that made it extra nice. We had great cookies and hors d'oeuvres and a lovely time of, of fellowship. What remains in my heart was as I was preparing to leave, my friend, full of 90 years of wisdom, took my hand and she said this, Rusty, listen to the Holy Spirit. The prophet Jeremiah ushers in that same message today when he says to us to look forward. Jeremiah tells his listeners that a time is coming. He helps them to look forward to a time when things will be better, when things will improve. He promised a new covenant, a covenant that would help them live as it moved them forward. Jeremiah's description of this covenant is powerful. It reminded them that the new covenant would not be written as a law, but it would be written in their hearts. It would be based on the nearness of God to them. How many of you can recall that great hymn, There is a Place quiet rest, near to the heart of God. I love Michael Dudgewitt's illustration of this new covenant. He said a baby bird was heard to ask its mother, Mother, what is air? And to this she made no reply. She simply spread her wings and flew. A baby fish asked its mother, Mother, what is water? She made no reply. She swished her tail and swam. A baby ant asked its mother, Mother, what is dirt? And she made no reply, but stretched her legs and dug the burrow a little deeper. A child in the nursery asked its mother, Mother, what is love? She made no reply, but she picked up her child and she hugged her. Like water to fish, like air to a bird, like dirt to an ant, like love to a child, such is the nearness and the presence of God to those who love him, to those who yearn to hear God's voice. 
Oh, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I believe that there is a balm in Gilead. I believe that there is a place of quiet rest. I believe that there is peace for those who grieve and mourn. And I believe that there is hope for the troubled soul. This message of hope is so very hard for us to hear in today's society. For we live in a world that promotes separation. We live in a climate of divisiveness. We live in a world that is so fast-paced that we often do not take the time to be still, to fast, to pray, to read scripture, to be alone, and to hear the small voice of God. For the world would have us think like the religious leaders and the Jesus followers of that time, that Jesus' ministry would be concluded, that the end would come at the cross. For they, like us, many times think it's over, it is finished. What shall we do? But God said, it is not finished. By Christ's death, God's power is revealed. The world of Christ, the world in Christ's day, needed Jesus, just as we need Jesus today. And it was out of that great need that Jesus was willing to to take up his cross and follow. It was because of this that he did not succumb to his own personal desires. I believe that if we look deeply at the gospel message, we will see that Jesus is acknowledging that our human condition so many times is to avoid suffering. But he also shows us that it is sometimes through that suffering that we find healing. Remember the words of the gospel that I shared with you? Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Should I say, Father, save me from this hour? But then we hear him say, no. It was for this reason that I have come to this hour so that the glory of God might be revealed through a life that yields itself to God's purpose. Oh, my friends, there is joy that comes after a night of weeping. There is hope for those who despair. There is hope for those who follow the way of Christ Jesus. This has been a very long Lent. This has been a dark season of Lent upon the church. I close today by sharing with you an anonymous inscription that I read this past week that is so powerful. It says that when you stand on the edge of the light, There is no more light to find. That we are called to step into the darkness. And that one of two things will happen. We will step into the darkness and we will find a solid stone to rest on. Or we will step into the darkness and we will be taught how to fly. Unrevealed until it sees us. Something only God alone.
you would stand as you're able, please. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. During the final days of his earthly life, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, and in faithful obedience, he opened the way to eternal salvation. Let us open our hearts this day as we lift up our deepest needs and concerns to the one who is mighty to save. Create in us a clean <coughs> heart, O oh God. And renew our spirit within us. We pray for all leaders and people that by the power of your cross, you would drive out all violence, domination, and injustice in our world as you draw us to your Christ. Create in us a clean heart, O God. And renew our spirit within us. We pray for our war-ravaged world, that you would teach us to walk together in your way of righteousness and peace. Create in us a clean heart, O God. And renew our spirit within us. We pray for the vocation of the church that our prayers would bear the fruit of action as we hear the cries of pain and suffering of those in need. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. And renew our spirit within us. We pray for the poor, the terrified and the oppressed, and those who are too much alone, that they may find a home in you as we serve them in your name. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. And renew our spirit within us. As your son anticipated his death on the cross, in light of your steadfast love, may all who have died or who are dying be at rest in your eternal care. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. And renew our spirit within us. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we glorify you, almighty God, with unending thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. And now, let us pray together the prayer that our Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, gracious God, we come as a faith community, giving thanks for the gift of a new child into our church family. God, we thank you for the gift of Brian James Hadsma II. We pray for him. In praise and thanksgiving, you have knit him together in his mother's womb. 
We pray for his mother and for his father, for his grandparents and his great-grandparents, for all who love him, for all who nurture and guide and care for him. Oh God, call upon us, your church, to guide this young child in the faith, to show him Jesus. In the holy name of our Christ we pray. Amen. Now we have the opportunity to give to God a portion of what is His. Please hear the invitation to the offering. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to our God.
As the high priest, Melchizedek, blessed Abraham and offered his tithe of bread and wine at your holy altar, may our gifts be made perfect through Christ to glorify you and bless the world. Amen. And go where I am, there will my servant be also. Go in peace to love and to serve Christ. May God, whose hand has written the law of love upon your heart, fill you with peace and the commitment to live in harmony. And the blessing of God who loves, forgives, and calls us home be with you now and always. Mm -hmm. 